All right, welcome back. What we're going to do now is a uh, previous video talked about the ISO 27000 series. We're now going to move in and talk about the um, NIST, uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology uh, Security model, Models. Um, these have a couple of advantages. First of all, they're publicly available at no charge. It, it's great to be able to go and grab these, use these, and uh, uh, claim them as your own ideas. No, I'm just kidding on that last point. Uh, but there's no re reason to reinvent the wheel. There is some good stuff out there at NIST around security, and you want to be able to use it. Um, that information's been available for quite a bit of time, and it's been broadly reviewed by government and industry professionals. And so there's a lot of vetting that has taken place uh, looking at uh, the security model. And what we're going to do now is uh, look at four examples. Uh, the first two are on this slide. You have the uh, SP 800-12, uh, which is a computer security handbook. SP 800-14, uh, generally accepted security principles and practices. 800-18, uh, revision one, guidelines for developing uh, security plans for uh, federal information systems. And then 800-30, uh, uh, which is uh, risk management. So let's look at uh, those four publications and see what we find. So 800-12, that first one's going to serve as a uh, great guide for the uh, management of an information security program. It doesn't tell you how to design and implement new programs, but it's great for that, that kind of basic building of a system. And what it has within it is this you know, laying out of a uh, NIST philosophy on security management. It identifies 17 controls in three categories. Um, and you, you've seen these before, this, this idea that some uh, component of security is managerial, some component is operational, and some component of it is actually technical. All right? And, and in fact, if you, you go back and look at how we do policy, uh, those kind of align around these three. We use different words, but it's really uh, the uh, uh, same idea. So this computer security handbook is going to identify these 17 controls, lay out this overarching uh, uh, framework and provide some philosophy. Now let's move forward and look at um, in this special publication 800-14. During, during 800-14 we're going to look at the best practices and development of those security, security blueprints or frameworks or models. Um, we're going to have um, pr principles that should be integrated into uh, your information security processes, and then it has eight points and 33 uh, different principles that are associated with it. Well, let's look at the points real quick. Uh, here they are. Uh, security supports the organization mission. It's not something separate in and of itself. It's integral to sound management. No matter what you're doing, you want to consider security as a component of the management of any system. It's got to be cost effective. You, you don't have endless money, and so you have to do some risk management in terms of determining what, what is appropriate security so that it is cost effective. Uh, security uh, owners have security responsibilities outside of their own organization. Kind of an important point, the fact that you've hardened one piece but you're a huge vulnerability to someone else uh, is not acceptable. Um, responsibilities and accountability have to be explicit. You need to, to get into detail here. It's got to be comprehensive. It has to be integrated with everything else that's going on, and then periodically assessed and constrained by social uh, factors. There are certain things that you might want to do in security, but you can't due to societal factors. All right, so we've talked about these eight points that underlie uh, NIST Special Publication 800-14. Let's now uh, look at the uh, 33 principles uh, within this publication. Uh, and, and you've got to memorize them all. No, you don't. No, you don't. But, but again, most of these should make sense, and you know where to go look for them in the slides uh, if you need this information. Or you want to learn more, you can always go to NIST and download uh, NIST Special Publication 800-14. So uh, here are the, the uh, 33 principles. You want to establish a sound security uh, policy as the uh, foundation for your design. Treat it as a uh, integral part. <clears throat> this sounds familiar. Of overall system design, split out physical and logical security, and then have those governed by the appropriate and associated security policies. Reduce risk to an acceptable level, not to zero, 
but to an acceptable level for your organization, your culture, your mission, your vision uh, of that particular uh, company. You do want to assume that external systems are insecure, and you may want to assume that internal are insecure. Uh, identify the trade-offs between reducing risk and increasing costs, because again, you don't have infinite money, and you don't have infinite risk. There, there are some limitations there, and so there, there's going to be some trade-off there. Uh, principle number seven says use a layered approach. You don't kind of remember back to the bullseye model. I know that seems so long ago. It was only a chapter ago we were talking about that or the onion model. But you want to have policies and networks and systems and applications and perhaps even data as uh, where you have layered security to protect the entire system. All right, you want to implement a tailored system security to meet organizational security goals. One size does not fit all, um, and so you're going to have to make some choices and some customization. You want to strive for simplicity as you're rolling out security because people are involved and you need their willing participation. And if you make it too complex, they're not going to understand it, not going to implement it. All right, looking at the next five, you want to design this to limit vulnerability and be resilient in your response. Minimize the number of elements that have to be trusted. In other words, that goes back to that comment about external and internal elements. Who do you trust? Uh, implement security through a combination of measures that are distributed both physically and logically. Provide assurance that it will be resilient in the face of expected threats. And limit and contain uh, those vulnerabilities that you find uh, within a particular system. Boy, I bet you're getting tired of me going through these, and we're only at 14, and we got 33 to go, so lightning round. Let's move forward. I'll let you look these over. You know, you got that pause button. You could pause it and actually look at these. Um, but as you uh, look at uh, the, the components, remember that systems interact. Uh, there are multiple systems out there. You want to look at public access in particular and make sure that uh, it's uh, restricted from critical resources. If you look at, for example, military uh, systems, uh, some of those systems are completely disconnected from the Internet uh, to protect them. Uh, use boundary mechanisms such as the one I just mentioned to separate computing systems and network infrastructures. And then base uh, security on open standards where possible. This, this idea of security through secrecy does not work. Someone will leak the secret, will reveal the information, and then uh, your security model is completely broken. All right, three more here. We're going to use common language for defining requirements that mere mortals can understand. Design and implement some audit mechanisms that detect unauthorized use and support incident investigations. Uh, design security to allow regular adoption of new technology. And again, that's going to depend on physical and logical uh, um, uh, security. You want to authenticate users and processes to make sure you have the right access controls both within and across domain. Use unique identifiers. If you can identify someone, then you can uh, enforce accountability. If you cannot identify who's attacking you, you can't. Implement uh, the principle of least privilege. Uh, implement, uh, do not implement unnecessary security mechanisms uh, because it's just not helpful. Um, looking, we're almost there. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. Hold on. We got to protect that information while it's being processed in transit and storage. And, mm, that sounds awfully familiar. It goes back to our CNSS cube. Uh, strive for operational ease of use. Don't make it too hard for the users. Develop and exercise your contingency planning procedures, and that could be incident response, could be disaster recovery, could be business continuity. Consider custom products um, to achieve adequate uh, security where you've got some new emerging technology. And then the last three, you've made it. We're almost there. Uh, you want to ensure proper security in shutdown and disposal of a system. Remember the Italy example where we would literally melt them down with thermite grenades. Uh, protect against um, likely classes of attacks. Not all attacks, but all likely uh, classes of attacks. Identify and prevent common uh, errors and vulnerabilities. That's where you want to focus uh, your attention and make sure the developers are trained how to develop uh, secure uh, software. We talked about this. most glaring example is buffer overflows. The only one that can stop a buffer overflows are developers. They, they, they have to actually do uh, their work. All right, 
Uh, I'm going to quickly go through a couple of uh, other, uh, the last two of the uh, NIST special publications. Here's 8018. Uh, uh, this one is uh, looking at methods for accessing, designing, implementing controls, and plans for uh, different uh, applications. Uh, here are the managerial controls that it has uh, built within it. And again, most of these uh, should make uh, sense. Here are the operational controls that are built into uh, that particular uh, publication or suggested by that publication. And here are the technical controls. Note that the operational controls were much larger than the technical and the uh, managerial controls. Finally, we move to NIST Special Publication 8030. And this is a foundation for the development of a risk management program and talks about how do you build a risk management uh, program. All right, last slide. Finally, we've got uh, RFC uh, 2196, which is site security, and how do you uh, protect uh, a, a site. Um, all right, and uh, that concludes this rather long video looking at the NIST security models, why they're popular, why they're free, they're widely vetted, uh, they're a great place to start in terms of building your security program. We looked at four different publications, actually five, there was a bonus, and the uh, components within that. This concludes this uh, video, and next video we're going to go and look at Corbett, or Control Objectives for Information and Related uh, Technology.